So there really are checks and balances within a democratic system uh, which allow for that kind of a policy to go forward. That's not the case in a place like Russia or China, where they could set something up like TikTok mm. to just hoover up all of the information, and they don't have to get permission from anybody, and they don't have to tell anybody about it. What do you think about the notion that TikTok is just a Chinese... Uh, vacuum basically to suck up identities. Do you, do you think that, I mean, if, if the CIA was trying to get people's identities and information, they could just make an app that's addictive and get it from other people. When, when you hear people talking about TikTok, like this is just a deep state Chinese ploy to uncover as many identities and information as possible, get close to people. Do you think that's actually happening or is that just overblown and like maybe there's some surface level things going on in that vein, but for the most part, it's really just a social media app. You know, I think that's actually happening, and and I say that because we we've seen a pattern of behavior from China. Uh, we saw it as they were trying to build five G networks. We saw it with Huawei uh, that was putting sort of back doors into their products. Um, you know, and so you know, we've we've seen you know it, like in Russia, it's same in China that it's. Uh, you know, a, a private business is not a private business. It very much uh, has to mm. has to answer to the state, and the state is going to take advantage of it as as much as possible to to get whatever it needs out of it. Um, which is why I I think we you know we shouldn't be doing business with a lot of these places. Um, uh, you know, and then you know to to flip that around, you ask, well, you know, could the CIA or something set something up like that? I I think what you know. What a lot of people uh, forget within the United States, of course, is that we we are a democracy and um, and we do have oversight. Uh, so, you know, we may yeah. not be perfect, uh, but we try to learn from our mistakes and we do try to correct them. So absolutely, there have been excesses in the past. And um, but, you know, in the end, we, we do try to uh, address those and hold people accountable. It's not always perfect and it doesn't always work. Uh, but to run a covert action program now uh, requires uh, congressional approval. It requires congressional oversight. Uh, it requires a presidential finding. So there really are checks and balances within a democratic system uh, which allow for that kind of a policy to go forward. That's not the case in a place like Russia or China, where they could set something up like TikTok mm. to just hoover up all of the information, and they don't have to get permission from anybody, and they don't have to tell anybody about it. So those are differences between how an authoritarian regime would run a surveillance program versus uh, you know something that an, an American or a, a you know European uh, intelligence agency could could run. If you could put yourself in the shoes of a Chinese agent that is working with TikTok to try to get information and you don't have the same checks and balances in US in the US what would be sort of your modus operandi to acquire that information in terms of how you're filtering it like would you just be looking for people who are close to politicians and and try to get at them through adjacent relationships? Are you tracking children of powerful people? Like, how do you think that's happening on the inside, if you could give your best estimation? Well, my guess is it's everything, right? You just want to have as much information as possible so that you have it if you ever need it. So if it then comes down to, uh, you know, person X is now, you know, too outspoken against the Chinese government. All right. What information do we have on person X that we might be able to use to convince this person otherwise or to, you know, shut this person up or to threaten this person or, or whatever, or to discredit this person? Uh, and that's when you then you dig in. So it's, it's not so much targeted at the moment. It's kind of taking in as much as you can so that you can, you know, you use it when you, when you need it. Um, I've heard this and other types of things being described as wiring for sound, right? You're, you're, mm. you're putting that infrastructure in so that when you decide you want a speaker here or there, you've already got that network in place. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it basically just planting social media microphones, essentially that are, you're casting a wide net as many places as you can. You're probably throwing away. 99% of it or at least not using it and then 
that point one percent that you can use you'll th- that comes from just not really filtering the information at the onset but just trying to get as many people as possible or you or you hold it right you don't know no. it may not be useful information today but in five years or ten years it might be useful information <laughs> 